Back off, Cal. You've been warned against attacking humans. Get out of here, you miserable piece of shit. Well, you're not dead. That's something. Would serve you right if you were. Come on. Don't try to talk. I'm not in the mood. Hang on. Wake up. Come on. Damn it, open your eyes before I dump ice water on you. There we go. How's the head feeling? Yeah, I imagine so. What do you remember? What? You don't think I'll believe you. Try me. Yeah, you were attacked. A werewolf, huh? Big one with tan fur and yellow eyes. And a silvery furred one with silver eyes stepped in and stopped it. Hmm. No, you don't sound crazy. I know you're not crazy because I'm the silver-eyed one who carried you out. The tan asshole you encountered was Kelvin. You're only wrong about one thing. We're shifters, not werewolves. More in control of our faculties, which makes Cal's actions unforgivable. <laughs> but he's a problem for another day. Where are you? The ass crack of nowhere. This primitive cabin is Obsidian Station. Used to be a fire lookout, now it's an outpost for local shifters. I took you here because the head wound was bleeding pretty bad, and I could get to first aid supplies and a phone faster if I came here than if I took you straight to headquarters. Are you feeling well enough to chat? Good. Unfortunately for both of us, we have to fill out some paperwork. Of course there's paperwork. This is my own personal hell. Why wouldn't there be? Okay. Do you have your ID, driver's license, passport? <sighs> of course you don't. Fine. What's your name? What? Am I a cop? No. I'm more of a security guard. I'm one of the unlucky peons tasked with keeping order within Evergreen, and this paperwork is something we do and turn over to the county law enforcement as well as the administration. Yeah, it's sort of a mini-government, the administration of Shifter Society. Every attack we know of gets documented and submitted to our regional headquarters in Seattle, sort of a CYA. Any further questions, or are you finally done wasting my time? Again, what's your name? And how do you spell that? Okay, date of birth. Home address. Best contact phone number. Today's date, October 21st, 2021. Time of incident, 2.30 a.m. Location, Roughly half a mile northwest of Obsidian Station on the West Evergreen Perimeter Trail. And how did you get to the trail?
parked at the National Park trailhead, hiked four miles on marked trail before leaving said trail and crossing into the Evergreen compound. And can you confirm for the record whether you crossed the barbed wire fence into Evergreen of your own free will or under duress? Free will. Next question. Why? You didn't seem surprised to find giant wolves surrounding you, which tells me you had some idea as to what Evergreen is all about. You knew we use it as a hunting ground, didn't you? You did. Yeah. That's what I thought. So let me get this straight. You intentionally trespassed onto private property, in a region known for shifter activity, in the dead of night, during the god's damned full moon, and not just that, but the hunter's moon, the full moon closest to Halloween. You're a dumbass. You had a good reason? Oh, pray tell, what could that reason be? And if you say you were trying to get turned on purpose, I am going to puke. If I had a dollar for every time we had to escort some obsessed wannabe off the property, I'd have enough money to buy a one-way ticket out of here. 2008 alone had enough of that to tire out even a season shifter. That was a special kind of hell. But back to the point. Reason. Now. You were hiking with your dog earlier this afternoon, and it ran off, so you chased it. And instead of reaching out to the known trackers who own the place, you decided to trespass. <laughs> well, that answer is about the only one you could have given that wouldn't disgust me. No, I didn't say I approved. As I said, we're all skilled trackers, and even the worst of us would never hurt a dog. We would have helped you. So the trespassing was a stupid choice. That said, I understand your side of it. Describe your dog. We'll look for it and return it to you when we find it. Yes. When. Description, please. Mm-hmm. Okay. Moving on with the rest of the paperwork. Were you bitten? Yes, I do have to ask. It could potentially be a huge deal, you know, ending your life as you know it and all that. Yes or no? No. Okay. Well, of course I can smell injuries on you, but you're kind of covered in your own blood, in case you didn't notice. Between the head wound, cutting your leg on what looks like barbed wire, and getting caught by Calvin's claws, I wouldn't be able to smell one injury from another on you. And besides, I was a little busy removing you from the situation. Once I got you back here, I did first aid to help with the life-threatening stuff, mainly the head wound, and you woke up. I woke you up before I addressed anything else. I figured more help would come by then. Speaking of which, where the hell is my idiot brother? I called him an hour ago and asked him to bring the truck and our medic so we could get you out of here. We're going to pass you and this report off to the county so they can take care of you from there. They'll likely take you to the hospital. Why do you care what I'm typing now? It's my part of the report, if you must know. How I found you, what I did for first aid, stuff like that. What's wrong? You look like you're going to be sick. Yeah, taking a smack to the head like that will make you nauseous. There's a bucket on the floor there. Use it if you need to. Your bones hurt? Like they ache? Or does it feel like fire burning along every nerve? I'm going to ask you again. And if you fucking lie to me, it could prove fatal. Were you bitten?
Show me, now. Give me that arm. Why the hell would you keep this from me? Scared? I'll give you a reason to be scared. Do you have any idea how serious this is? You've been bitten by a wolf shifter on the full moon. You're screwed. But if there's anyone in the world who understands just how screwed you are, if there's anyone in the world who's equipped to help, it's going to be the shifter that rescued your sorry ass. Of course I didn't check you. I'm not in the habit of strip-searching anyone who gets attacked in the woods to see if they've been bitten. I gave you the opportunity to tell me, and you lied straight to my face. <sighs> Yep, that will happen. My eyes go silver when I'm about to turn. I sometimes turn when I lose my temper. And right now, I'm completely livid. We're done with the lies. You're going to answer every one of my questions truthfully and concisely. Were you bitten only once? Good. Your rate of change won't be any faster than normal, then. You feel queasy, right? And your bones feel like they're burning? What about your eyes? Are you seeing red around the edges of your vision yet? <sighs> okay, that's good. If that changes, you tell me right away, understood? I need to call Ethan. Ethan, where are you? What? I called you an hour ago. Why the hell aren't you here yet? Look, it doesn't matter. I need you to get down here, now. The hiker Cal attacked. They were bitten. They've already started to turn. Yeah, well, I was a little busy trying to stop them from bleeding out to notice. If you leave now, you might get here in time for their transformation. Bring Maggie or Zack or Shet, anyone who has experience as a mentor. Even you by yourself will work, but I need someone down here quick. It can't be me. Don't be an ass. We had a deal. I don't give a crap if you're my alpha. You're also my brother, and I'll talk to you how I please. No, don't. Just please. He's come. Ethan? Don't you dare hang up this phone. Ethan? God damn it. What am I gonna do? What is it? Yeah, I can get you some water. Here. Look, you're not going to get any comfort from me. I'm not the person people go to for comfort. I can't offer the empty platitudes and soothing words you probably want to hear right now. But I can give you the truth. And if Ethan doesn't get here in time, I can promise I at least won't leave you alone. I'll stay here next to you. The truth, the truth is that you're about to experience the worst pain you've ever felt in your entire life. Your body's going to feel like every cell is rending itself apart, and I suppose that's what will actually happen. Your muscles will strain and tear as you shift into your new form. Your bones will reshape themselves. Your eyesight will become tinged with red, and then it will go darker and darker until you're completely blind and stay that way until the transformation is complete. The whole thing only lasts about 30 seconds, but it's going to feel like a lifetime. And then, when you come out of it, you're going to be disoriented. All of your heightened senses are going to hit you like a freight train. And you're going to feel this intense desire to hunt, to kill. It will fade over time, but your first instinct is not going to be one of temperance. It will be very emotionally draining. Not only that, but your life will change. You're welcome to return home after you've gotten a grip on your new reality, but that can take up to a couple years. 
Most shifters choose to stay within the community that raised them. Less judgment, less temptation, more support. How was I turned? <laughs> I wasn't. I was born, not made. But the first time a shifter undergoes a change, well, it sucks equally for everyone, regardless of how they got their power. But I need you to hold on. If you feel like you're starting to pull apart, keep yourself together. Got it? Don't give in to it until someone else gets here. Try, at least. What do you mean? Oh, I told Ethan it can't be me. You heard that. <sighs> Look, it's none of your business as to why I said that. But when a new shifter turns, they imprint on the first shifter they see. What? No, dumbass. It's not a romantic thing. Gross. Gods, how many young adult novels have you read exactly? When I say imprinting, it's more of a mentor thing. Whoever you see first, you sort of shadow them. Learn how to live your new life by living alongside them. They're supposed to teach you how to become a functional shifter. Why not me? <laughs> I'm the last person anyone should be learning from. Besides, I have a deal with my alpha that involves me getting out of this place. The last thing I need is to have baggage tying me down here. Don't look so hurt. You walked into this knowing what might happen. You fucked around and now you're finding out. Hey. Oh, shit. No. You can't turn yet. Look at me. Oh, damn it, Ethan, where are you? Hey. I know you feel like you're going to explode, your vision is going, you're terrified, but you've got to fight this. Hold on. Oh, God. It's too late. Look at me. I'm going to count down from 30. When I reach zero, it'll be over. I promise. No matter what you feel, no matter how scared you are, just follow my voice. 30. 29. 28. 27. 26. 25. 24. 23. 22. 21. 20. 19. 18. 17. 16. 15. 14. 13. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Wake up, shifter. Hey. Breathe. You're fine. You've just been taken apart and put back together, but you're gonna be fine. I know you're not in your human form anymore, but that's normal. Just breathe. That's it. I suppose a formal introduction is now in order. I'm Ruby. And, for better or worse, probably worse, we're family now. <laughs>